Waiting to Crumble, written by John Ott. Interior, nursing home, day. Barbara White, an elderly woman, sits in a wheelchair and is rolling herself frantically down a hallway, yelling wildly. Stuart White, her elderly husband, follows in another wheelchair, calling her name, Barbara, repeatedly. Various staff members join the chase. I've got to get out! Leave me alone! Help me, please, help me! Barbara, please stop. I love you, Barbara, stop! An overweight nurse, dressed immaculately in a starched uniform with perfectly coiffed hair, runs behind Stu. Stop, Mrs. White. Please, stop! Two other nurses begin running behind the pair, followed by several elderly residents who are running or chasing in wheelchairs. As Barbara continues down the long hallway, more people, both staff and patients, follow. Finally, Barbara reaches the door and tries to open it. Let me out! I gotta get out of here! You're trying to kill me! Help! Please help me! Barbara frantically tries to open the door, setting off a loud alarm. Stu, who has been calling out, reaches Barbara and tries to get her to turn loose the door handle. She fights and begins hitting Stu. Let go of me! I know who you are. Let me go! Why are you trying to kill me? Who are you? Let me go! It's me, Stu. Don't you know me, Barbara? I don't know you. You want me to die! I know who you are! The overweight nurse reaches Barbara. Mrs. White, please come back to your room. Barbara begins screaming and trying frantically to open the door. The alarm continues as other staff arrive, followed by residents. There is much banter and mayhem. Suddenly, the door opens and Barbara's wheelchair is out the door. Barbara, stop! Please! Mrs. White, please don't go out there! Stu begins following in his wheelchair as Barbara starts down a steep hill. Stu stops at the top, watching Barbara speed down the hill. The others also pause, uncertain how to proceed. Stu takes a deep breath and begins chasing Barbara in his wheelchair. Barbara, I'm coming! The nurse looks shocked, uncertain what to do. She begins running down the steep hill, followed by an ever-increasing group of people. Barbara's wheelchair hits bumps as she heads toward the pond at the bottom of the steep incline. Stu is frantically wheeling, trying to catch up with her before she reaches the pond. Stop, Barbara! Put on the brakes! The brakes, Barbara! Stop! Barbara's wheelchair rushes toward the pond. As it does, she hits a few bumpy spots on the ground that slow her down. She hits a raised spot at the edge of the water, and her chair stops cold. She is unharmed. Moments later, Stu's chair, which is still going full speed, hits the same raised spot. His chair stops cold. Stu does not. He flies from the chair, landing in the water. Mr. White, are you all right? The nurse, very out of breath, runs to the water's edge, followed by a now large group of people. She runs to the water to rescue Stu. Barbara watches, laughing uproariously. Way to go, Stuart! Way to go! Barbara, still laughing, turns her wheelchair and pushes herself away, unnoticed as all the attention is on Stu, who is thrashing about in the water. Several others have now joined the nurse, all trying to rescue Stu. By the time they finally get him out of the water, Barbara is nowhere to be seen. The staff struggle to put Stu back in his wheelchair, water dripping. Clothing soaked. <coughs> Where's Barbara? Everyone looks around. No Barbara. The nurse, also soaked, becomes frantic. Mrs. White, where are you? Stu looks frantic as he begins rolling his wheelchair in search of Barbara. The nurse hurries away, also looking around frantically, as both of them call for Barbara. Cut two. Interior, day. Stuart sits in a doctor's examination table, wearing a bathrobe. A different nurse is writing in his chart. Think I'll live? At least until dinner. How are you feeling? Tougher than I look. It takes more than a little swim to get me. Any news on Barbara? Mr. White, your wife is fine. I just worry about her, that's all. She's not herself lately. I know, Mr. White. Maybe she should go to the East Wing for a while, until the doctors can figure out what's going on. It's the medicine. They keep changing her medicine. I hope that's all it is, Mr. White. Of course that's all it is. You think she has Alzheimer's, don't you? I'm not a doctor, I couldn't say. But you do. They all think she's crazy. Well, it's not true. Sure, she gets a little confused at times, but it passes. Of course it does. Now, you just sit for a few minutes. I think the doctor wants to talk with you before you go back to your room. As the nurse turns to leave, Stu grabs her arm. She'll be all right, won't she? The nurse smiles and pats his arm. The doctor will be right in. The nurse leaves the room as Stu wipes away a tear. 
The door opens, and a young doctor enters the room, smiling as he holds out his hand. <coughs> Stu looks up at him, but does not shake his hand. The doctor lowers his hand as his face takes a somber expression. The doctor sits in a nearby chair. Mr. White, you're in remarkable shape for a man your age. 35, isn't that isn't so old? The doctor laughs louder than necessary. He then takes on a serious demeanor and leads towards Stu. It's Mrs. White I want to talk about. I don't suppose you're referring to my mother. <laughs> no, sir. <clears throat> I'm referring to your wife. I'm sure you've noticed she's been confused and forgetful. Only occasionally. And she has been combative at times, according to the staff. They provoke her. They're impatient. They rush her. She becomes fearful when she's rushed. I talked to the director. We agree she should go to the East Wing, just for a short time, until we better understand what's wrong. It's the medicine. You doctors keep changing her medicine, and it's making her crazy. Perhaps, Mr. Wing. That's one of the things we want to explore. Explore? Why can't she stay with me while you're playing Christopher Columbus? I know this is hard for you, but you're not able to care for her any longer. You've done a splendid job. Now you need her. I've done a crappy job. Otherwise, why are you moving her? We've been married 48 years. She needs me. I need her. Mr. White, please make this as easy as possible for both of you. She's not that bad. I tell you, she's not. She just gets a little confused from time to time. Why do you make it worse than, than it is? I understand she hit you recently. No. Not really. Not hard. She was just a little confused. She didn't mean it. She thought I was someone else in for a moment. Who did she think you were? I don't want to say. Who, Mr. White? Who did your wife think you were after almost 50 years of marriage? Adolf Hitler? Is there another one? And you don't think your wife of almost 50 years mistaking you for Hitler indicates a problem? I didn't say that. Let's move her to the East Wing for a short while and run some additional tests and go from there. When? Don't need to delay things. When? The sooner we get her moved, the sooner we'll know what's going on. When? Today. Now. She's in the next room right now. We're taking her straight over to East Wing for you can't do this. I'm afraid we have no choice. Would you like to see her? Of course I want to see her. You're the crazy ones. The doctor smiles and stands, goes to the door and opens it. Nurse, please bring Mrs. White. The doctor sits again and leans close to Stu. Mr. White, I know this is as hard for you as it is for Mrs. White. Maybe harder. We will do all we can to you your life. Stu frowns, saying nothing. The door opens and the nurse wheels in Barbara. She is motionless, sitting upright, her eyes closed. The nurse pushes Barbara near Stu. Stu takes Barbara's hand and glares at the doctor. He and the nurse quietly exit the room. Barbara, do you know me? Stuart, Barbara, open your eyes, Barbara. Look at me, please. Barbara sits motionless, but begins humming a song. Barbara, please, I'm trying to talk to you. Open your eyes. The humming gets louder, but the eyes remain closed. Barbara, please, stop humming and talk to me. He kisses her hand, but she now begins singing the song she was humming. Stu appears to be frustrated. Barbara, don't you know me, Barbara? It's Stu! Suddenly Barbara stops singing, her eyes closed. Stu? Is it really Stu? Yes, Barbara, it's me, Stu. Open your eyes. Look at me, Barbara. Very slowly, the eyes open. She blinks twice, smiles, and turns towards Stu. He smiles brightly, holding her hand. Barbara. Barbara looks at Stu. Her smile fades, and a look of terror comes over her face. She screams. Hitler! Go away! Go back to hell! Barbara becomes hysterical and tries to get away. Stu tries to stop her by holding her wheelchair, but this only upsets her more. She screams again and again, desperately trying to escape. The doctor and nurse rush in. What's wrong? What, what happened? Hitler! He's here! Hitler is here! Help me, please! Somebody help me! He wants to kill me! The nurse goes to the side to prepare an injection as the doctor calls for additional help. Stu sits silently, watching, then begins to cry softly as several staff members arrive and wheel a still screaming Barbara from the room. They stop momentarily as the first nurse gives a fighting Barbara an injection in her backside. 
the others holding her as still as possible. They then wheel her from the room, with the doctor following. Stu sits alone, still sobbing quietly. Fade out. 